So after I upload a vid, I always scroll through the comments, harding, replying, all that good stuff, right? But as I was scrolling, I kept on seeing these comments talking about some, oh, you don't want to see what Mei Mei and you, you were doing. Bro was not ready for what Mei Mei is. And my brain instantly was like, oh damn, she probably got bodied in some gruesome way. But nah, I was wrong. I honestly would have preferred them getting smoked than to what we actually got. Now, at first glance, I was like, okay, sure. We didn't see Mei Mei in like seven episodes and the first thing we see some titties. But the titties wasn't the problem. It's when the camera flipped and Yu Yu was on the other side of that bed. Now, I'm pretty sure they're blood related. And whether they did anything or not, they need to be jailed for showing me this unholy scene. But enough of that. We back where we left off to ghetto pulling up to quote unquote save Mahito. But Yuji was on hot. He saw the man who IP banned Goju from the server and was not gonna let that slide. And I didn't know ghetto can use Genjutsu. Cause it in Yuji's eyes, it looked like he was about to fall, but to everyone else, that boy simply tripped. Not gonna lie, it's one thing to be my ass, but making me look goofy is unacceptable. So Yuji went in for round two, this time jumping over the fake hole, but Ghetto said, nah, we ain't doing that and body him with centipedes. This dude, Yuji can't catch a break. It's been non-stop boss battles for my guy. And that's when Mahito tried to sneak Ghetto, but he didn't know he got Spidey sense, and Ghetto did not take that act too kindly. At first, I thought he was just trying to murk him. Turns out, he put that nigga in his inventory. Inventory. And I don't know about y'all, but when they start talking about their techniques and shit, I'd be so confused. But what I got from this is that he has some technique called Maximum Uzumaki, which is basically combining the curses that he owns to make a strong blast of curse energy. And if the curse happens to be a high grade, then he gets to rob them of their technique. Then bro proceeds to deep throw the ball. <laughs> And after how long, the other students finally show up. But now I realize why nobody called on them niggas. They really out here using arrows and guns. Like, bro, we all know unless it's a damn Kamehameha, projectiles never work in anime. You either need a melee weapon or straight hands to do damage. And Shorty right here knows the anime rules. She pulled up behind him using her sword technique. And I was like, oh yeah, she finna go crazy. Honestly, I didn't know what I was expecting. And what made it worse? This dude ghetto out here moving like Aizen. She had the producer turn up the song and everything. But the moment that sword got pumped, everything went quiet. Not only did he completely humble her, he wanted to show off the new move. He unlocked and almost smoked her with that Uzumaki technique. But luckily, these two came through with the save or would have been two more bodies at the Shibuya funeral. All of a sudden, we see this dude Choso after however long, getting some type of flashback of spending time on Yuji. So he wasted no time to get in the mix. That's when we find out that one of the names that ghetto brain goes by is Noritoshi Kamo, who turns out to be the most evil sorcerer of all time. And that's not all. Turns out, this whole time, Yuji and Choso are brothers. And then this person pulled up to help ghetto. And at first, I thought this was a girl, but after hearing bro's voice, looks like a girl but sounds like a nigga but anyways that boy choso was pissed almost made him smoke his little bro so he started charging that beam and almost took his head off and this goes to show if you're strong enough you can damn near do anything his power is blood manipulation but ended up earth bending so then he destroyed the top of the rock throwing ghetto in the air then came back through with another beam not gonna lie that would have been a mean combo if ghetto was over leveled and this dude has nothing but a smile on his face there's no way choso wins now then Choso had a big IQ idea calling in that airstrike, but I guess either Ghetto was immune to projectiles or that nigga aim is just trash. So Ghetto came flying down and I knew hands were about to be thrown. But he flashed up behind him and a single hit, which Choso blocked, set him flying. Then he ended up spawning a goon just to knock him off. And the thing I like about Choso, it feels like he's optimizing the use of his ability. From that random ass airstrike to him using the pressure of the blood just to boost himself back up. You know, maybe I was a little too hard on bro. So anyways, Choso thought it was time for that hand-to-hand -hand combat. Went in for that three-piece, but Ghetto said he's not feeling hungry. He went for the sweep kick. Choso dodged. Went for the heel kick, but Ghetto backflipped on his ass. Went for that charge right hook, but instead got hit with a mean reversal. Once again, Choso had an amazing amazing play. Putting his other hand behind his back to shoot the beam, he'd be having some crazy moves but Ghetto was simply better. That knee to the jaw got him heated now though. Was on the offensive for a cool two seconds until Ghetto struck that man in the sternum. 
Meanwhile, these three are just enjoying the show. And tell me, who does Yuji think he is? This is the second time someone trying to be eyes in this episode. I don't see no type of gel in sight. You have no reason to defy the laws of physics like that. That's when everybody on the field thought it was sweet. And till homie had to let them know they place real quick. Turn everybody into an icy. And homie did not forget what Choso did to his hand. He wanted it back in blood expeditiously. But Yuji slid for his brother with a clutch save. Then homegirl came from the top ropes with some air bending just for a simple flick or wrist to deflect it at this point is a 3v2 and honestly it only takes one of them to solo these three and that's exactly what happened shorty started talking about how they gotta buy some time what went through y'all heads thinking y'all were like that homie wasted no time to turn them into ices again and when it seemed like everyone was a guaranteed pack a stroke of luck was on their side the homegirl yuki spun the block now yuki is cool and all but y'all already know who I wanted to see spin, that boy Yuta. Wherever he's at, that boy's having a great time while everyone else is fighting for their life. But yeah, bro, next week is the last week, and we probably gonna have to wait till 2027 for the next season. 